You've survived another week. Thank you for listening, downloading, and supporting the Black Man with a Gun Show. Thanks to all my patrons for taking care of this show. This podcast was provided free of charge, but it was not free to produce. Talking about Eleutheromania. Ooh, what a big word. Say it again. Eleutheromania. Sharing some thoughts about being free, about the price of liberty, about YouTube channels and other stuff that we get for free and maybe take for granted. On this episode, you'll be joining Michael and I as we talk about community projects that he has started and he needs your help to make it happen. And we'll be sharing our last Law of Self-Defense tip of the week from Andrew Bronco. Going a different direction in the month of July. Not quite sure where I'm going, but I'm going somewhere. And I might take a little vacay before I get there, if that's all right with you. And because I'm also the pastor of Patriots, Pistoleros, and Paladins, I want you to know that I care about you. My country, tis of thee. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. January 28, 1852, American abolitionist and activist Wendell Phillips, former attorney at the time, speaking to members of the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society, said, Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. Power is ever stealing from the many to the few. The manna of popular liberty must be gathered each day, or it is rotten. The living sap of today outgrows the dead rind of yesterday. The hand entrusted with power becomes, either from human depravity or esprit de corps, the necessary enemy of the people. Only by continued oversight can the Democrat in office be prevented from be hardening into a despot. Only by unintermittent agitation can a people be sufficiently awake to principle not to let liberty be smothered in material prosperity. That's some heavy stuff, right? Now, I know in history and all you history lovers out there, you've heard the term eternal vigilance as the price of liberty. And it's often mistakenly attributed to the Irish lawyer and politician John P. Curran and frequently to Thomas Jefferson. Well, they actually changed it up a little bit. Wendell Phillips used it as an abolitionist, and it even predates him, actually. You know what? I think sometimes we forget why we fight. We get caught up on the material and say, well, I have my AR-15 and you can't have it. I have my revolver. I have my father's 1911. I have this very expensive firearm that I can buy and I have it so you can't have it. Don't get stuck on the material. We fight for the Second Amendment. We fight for our rights as free Americans, for our families, for ourselves, for you and for me. We fight so that we may have the right to own, to use, to live, to protect ourselves from violent people. If you truly want to make an impact in what you say and what you write on social media, touch me with it. Make me feel why you're saying it. Let it be for more than than mere ownership of some material piece of metal and plastic and polymers. That's how you win an argument. The other side does it all the time when they pimp little kids and teenagers from high schools. If you want to be more effective, don't quote our politicians and our historical figures because nobody's seen them lately. Say you're doing it for your daughter. You're doing this for your son. You're leaving a legacy for your grandchildren. You're protecting your spouse. You do this because you like life. Make it real. The right to keep and bear arms is similar to the abolitionist movement. Think about it. 
It's social. It's a political push for the emancipation of our mind to end racial discrimination and segregation, to advocate for the freedom to own, to collect, to use a mechanical device known as a firearm. Regardless of who you are, regardless of your financial situation, you know what a fact is? It's a fact that every morning you get up, somebody is trying to steal your freedom. You have a responsibility to stop that from happening. And while I'm talking about free, think about all the things that we get for free. The internet, for example. YouTube. Right now, there are YouTube people that are getting slammed and slapped down and canceled because they're pro-gun. Even big companies like Brownells is getting dogged. It's a free service. But you quickly realize that when you don't own anything, you got no dog in the fight. You see, the truth of it is, YouTube isn't really free. There's resources used in this production. There's money spent on the marketing campaigns and the wages to pay those who sell the actual products that hit the background of our videos. There's a whole market behind it. So, because they're offering it, and we accept those terms of service. You're a slave. Own your own stuff. Pay for your own bandwidth. If you truly want to be free, you truly want to put up your own stuff, subscribe and buy your own space. Then you can say what you want. And while we're talking about things that are free, let's talk about freedom of speech. It's supposed to be a mechanism that fosters societal progress. It allows all ideas to be put forward, debated, and evaluated so that the good ones can beat out the bad ones. It's an effective system, in theory. It has a fundamental problem, though, in practice. It presupposes that we rationally debate or evaluate ideas, and we don't, especially when it comes to politics. And this is because we have failed to create a culture conducive to civil, level-headed, and substantive discourse. Instead of trying to look at an issue from all sides, like we say, we each pick a stance, align ourselves with a, quote, team, and then turn our opponents into caricatures. You know, Republicans are all racist, Democrats are communists, conservatives want religion to control government, and liberals want government to control your life. And the truth is out there somewhere. I just hit you with a couple of complex thoughts. Let me know what you think about freedom in any of those that I mentioned. On our Facebook page or send me an email. I'd love to post up your comments. Freedom isn't free. If you carry a gun for self-defense, be smarter and join the United States Concealed Carry Association so you can be covered in case you have to use the thing to protect your life from the judicial system. Upfront bail bond funding, attorney counseling, personal hardship coverage, membership deals and discounts, firearms theft liability coverage, and more. Go to uscca.blackmanwithagun.com right now. U.S. CCA dot blackman with a gun dot com. Hey, Michael, how's it going, brother? It's going another day in paradise, living the dream. You know, somebody got to do it. Man, last time we spoke, you had some really good ideas about just ways to help out our country, our people. And uh, I think since then, you even like worked on some more details and stuff. So how about sharing with us what you got going on? I came up with three ideas that I want to do for the community and I put a lot of thought into it to get it started. The three ideas was the summer youth camp for children to teach them to shoot um, with techniques and learning the firearm. Sponsoring three law enforcement officers for jujitsu and starting a voter registration drive. Okay. I think the, all of them are admirable. Um, they're, they're, each one of them is huge by itself. 
But um, you're not just talking about rifles with the with the youth. You're talking about handguns, right? Yeah, only only handguns um, right now because um, I have to buy the supplies. Mm-hmm. So right now I'm looking to buy a number of 22 long rifle pistols um, with the blue training guns to properly teach the technique. You know, so eventually, um, if this actually kicks and goes very well, and you know, I'm only looking at probably doing this like once or twice a week for the duration of the summer. Okay. So, um, not every day, of course, but once or twice a week to keep the mind flowing and keep interest going. But at the same time, overall, with all three community projects that I'm looking at doing, I totaled it up to be at least $10,000 to start it. You know, right. so that's to buy the rifles, the training aids the sponsorship and all the officers and then all yeah. the supplies for the voter registration. Okay. Now on top of that, um, cause you know, I'm not balling like that. <laughs> I'm actually looking for help. So if the people in the audience are willing to contribute. I started a GoFundMe, which is gofundme.com backslash M dash W tactical. And if the people can give whatever they can spare to help this go, it, it'll be greatly appreciated. And hopefully these ideas can spread over to neighboring cities that can catch and go across the country. Because when you look at it overall, it, it'll be a win-win for any community. Okay. I got you. Tell me about the law enforcement piece. What are you trying to do with that? So with the... um. The jiu-jitsu training that I'm trying to do for the law enforcement officers is um, instead of just picking one, I decided to make it a little challenging, so I decided to go with three. Okay. You know? So the way I look at it is, um, originally the way I looked at it was get these officers trained in jiu-jitsu because they can go back to their you know, commands and teach other people, but that might be a little too much, you know? So if we can just start off with three in each year, double it up. So next year, go to six. The year after that, go to nine. But my intent is to apply the officer with another skill set, whereas they can use various techniques instead of relying on the handgun or the firearm for the first and final resolution. Yeah, there's a, a lot in that whole use of force continuum. But for some people, when only tool you got in your box is a hammer, every problem you got seems like a nail. That's it. So right now what I'm looking at, because, you know, I've been doing jujitsu for a number of years. And even so, when an incident happens, it seems like everything slows down. But I have time to think and rationalize and, you know, make my actions worthwhile. You know, so if it works for me and then jujitsu is something that a lot of people do, why can't we share it with um, law enforcement officers? That's good, dude. I like that a lot. Yeah. So, um, like I said, these three are my big push right now that I want to get this going before the end of the year. But at the same time, it's just like anything else, time and money. You know, um, I have the time. I just don't have the money. So I need the help from the people and anybody else who's willing to um, help sponsor this event. Right. And that last piece was your voter registration. Yes. Yeah, so the voter registration um, is just not going to be going around getting people to sign up to vote. Okay. It's going to be like get somebody, a dedicated volunteer that will go out, do the research and explain, OK, this person is running for this off. Break it down. And this is who they're going up against. But, you know, give you like a thorough a background because, you know, a lot of people don't do the research. Because not too many people are active in their local elections. Right. I mean, you know, so it's just like the only time people really vote is when it's time for the president. You should start at the bottom and work your way up instead of at the top and expect it to flow down. Yeah. Right. And a lot of this information is also like citizenship 101, just telling people the rights that they do have and help them exercise some stuff too. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. So we just want to do like the education portion of it, of telling people, okay, this person is going to fight for or stating they're going to fight for X, Y, Z. But in the end, this is what is going to affect you and A, B, and C. But this person over here is doing LMNOP, but it's going to affect E, F, and G. 
So For it's real. just like the the whole resolution of these people already did the research. Just listen to what they have to say. And then if you feel you need to do a little bit more research, do so. So you can make an informed decision. So your voice could be heard in your community. That's good. Cause sometimes the, the source of the inter- information kind of matters. So mm-hmm. if you're, if you're talking and it's not a talking head that they're used to, might have more credibility that you're trying to actually help somebody, not trying to get a vote through or make money off of the deal. Exactly. You know, so like I'm just going to be a neutral party. You know? That's cool, man. For those who don't remember, uh, you recently got separated out of the army. So you're a veteran of how many years? 22. Yeah. People kind of glaze over that, man. So I, I want to make sure folks remember that we got a, uh, what was your rank when you got out? E7. Sergeant first class. So we, we got, we got a Sergeant first class, just got out of the army and he's trying to help do more than just, uh, just some people. I'm just saying. So mm-hmm. man, my hat's off to you. I'm saluting you from this side. Uh, oh, yeah. I appreciate that. Sponsorship for some school youth program to get some firearms for them. We also want to sponsor some law enforcement officers to get some hand-to-hand training, use of force stuff that's not paid for by their people. That's community policing right there. That's that's allowing the citizens to kind of give back to the cops, man. That's, that's awesome right there. And then um, voter registration and citizenship. If we can find the writers within our, our community, because we got like smart people listening to this show who can help write this stuff up, to make it look pretty, sound pretty, and spread it. There's no reason why we can't get this funding. What's the GoFundMe address for the money? All right. The GoFundMe address is um, GoFundMe.com backslash M-W Tactical. Again, GoFundMe.com backslash M-W Tactical. Good stuff. Uh, What's your timeline? How soon do you hope to get started? I want to get started by at least August 1st. Okay. Give me two months to actually gather everything, but it's going to cut the training down on um, the children, the youth portion just for that one month. But even if I can get that one month started, it'll actually get the interest in the area populated. So the next summer, now I can put together a list and say, okay, these are the days I'm doing this because even though I said it, I want to do it for two days a week, I probably can do it for three days a week. Whereas each day it's a different group of children because I'm going to have help help me with this. Also, you know, other people have already said, okay, if you get this going, I will volunteer to help you. With All right. That's what I'm talking about. Good stuff, man. Yeah. So I've, I've been talking and, you know, writing down little notes, trying to brainstorm it, get it all going. Now I just need to put it forth and make it happen. And of course, like I said, anybody who contributes, um, I will show you specifically by first, okay, if you give $10, I'll give you a shout out on social media. But even so, I will like notify like, hey, look, this is what we just got, you know, like 10 or 5, 22 pistols, right? This is the amount of ammo we got. You know, anybody want to contribute more? Please. You know, I really want this to be a success just to show like all gun guys are not bad guys looking for the gunfight, as they like to say in the media, (laughs) you know? Yeah, we know different. Yeah. All right, man. So if somebody has a question for you in particular, how can they reach you? Email address. Yeah, you can email me at info at m-wtactical.com or give me a call at 803-250-250. One two five six. That phone number you can actually text or leave a voicemail, and I will get back to you. Again, that phone number is eight zero three two five zero one two five six. That email address is info at m dash w tactical dot com. My man, Michael, doing it, man, doing it. Yeah, I'm trying to, man, I'm trying to. So you know, like that goes back to when I was a kid, whereas my father used to always tell me. Stop complaining about things and come up with a solution. You hear people complaining. Okay, well, this is my solution. I hear you, man. Way to lead. Way to take up the leadership role on this one. So right now, outside of that, those three um, community projects that um I want to get going, got to start working out extra hard because 
NRA carry guard that's going to be in Virginia in September is taking place. And I got asked if I can model some shirts. So I got to get my summer body back in motion here. <laughs> right here looking all swole. We got to get, get do some extra push ups before I go to bed. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I got a phone call today, and um, somebody had asked me if, if I would do that for them, and I, I told them yes, I would. Nice, you know, um, you know, you know me, I just do stuff just to have a laugh, get some fun out of it, but it's going to help out somebody in the process. So that's what you do. That's good, man. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, we gotta we gotta keep it going. <laughs> yeah. So um, what's going on with you? I'm working on right now just on. Uh, an air gun that I got. I'm working on finessing it, learning how to use it better. And um, I'm actually fighting to even start a, a youth league, um, an urban shooter league with these air guns by uh, airforceairguns.com. And uh, I think this might be like a, a really cool solution for those who live in and near the city. Not cheap, but we're going to work it out. We're going we're gonna to work, see if I can get uh, some kids. It's kind of, it kind of like be an urban, uh, Urban Appleseed. I know there's always been air gun leagues and stuff for the for young people, but nothing this high tech. Um, so I'm just kind of taking up a notch, do something a little different. But I'm still in the planning stages with that one. So and just trying to keep um, keep and grow this podcast. Yeah, what's what's different about this air gun that's different from like the Red Daisy from when I was a kid? Um, this one's you charge it by a scuba tank. One scuba tank can probably do ten or fifteen of these guns like with no problem. But you're putting in the rifle that I have right now, you're putting 3,000 pounds a square inch in a little tank. Um, this thing shoots out 22 speed pellets. So you basically got a 22 that's suppressed coming out of kind of a rifle, which is kind of cool. Right? So how many times did um, Miss Blanchard tell you to get back in the house and stop shooting the squirrels? <laughs> this time she was like, Wow, what are you doing? I'm taking a picture. And then, but it was like rainy out here. So I didn't stay outside too long. I would like shoot, come back inside and you know, clear back up. And I was having a ball because so I went out and bought one of those little uh, metal spinners. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I've been watching like Hickok 45 and all those guys who have like the plate ranges. Mm-hmm. And you live anywhere near Washington, D.C., you can't have any of that stuff. But with this 22 air, air rifle, I can. So um, I'm about to have a whole change of yard here in a minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let the fun ring. Yeah, so yeah, it's gonna have like a little baby steel ch- challenge plate thing going on here with my rifle. So that's that's the beginning of it for me. Yeah, I, I was thinking about um, picking up a BB gun from Walmart, and of course, you know, teaching Emma when she gets a little bit older on that. You know, yeah. just rifle stuff. You know. Yeah trigger and body position and everything that'd be good oh yeah but same time the way you're talking about this air gun i might have to go ahead and um make a phone call or two and see about getting one you know oh i got i got you when i when i see you i I bring you one oh yeah that'll work (laughs) (laughs) that'll work (laughs) yeah because you know i'm all about um i really want to get her into that because I already see her doing stuff I done when I was a child because like she's already fading towards basketball right now, you know. So I was like, okay, you know, I was pretty good at basketball at a younger age. I want her fallback to be, you know, firearms, like so, pops, because I, I want her to be that little girl that outdo a lot of guys, you know. She and, will be. Oh yeah, and if she if she has that drive like I got, oh, people gonna have it to pay for. <laughs> Oh, I can already see her getting in a lot of trouble. Well, I'm not going to let him outdo me just because I'm a girl. That's right. That's my girl right there. <laughs> she going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. She going to do it. Yeah. So anything else um, um, popping up there in your area? No, we just trying to dry out, man. It's just been raining forever. Um, I tripped over a turtle today. My yard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing here? I mean, I guess he's trying to find a dry spot too. So, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my um, my whole thing was I went up to Charlotte to go visit some family, and on my drive back, literally, it was like every 15 minutes, 
I was going in the rain, then coming out of rain and going back in the rain. And I was like, man, I know those people up north are getting it, especially people down in Florida. I know they are really getting it down there. <laughs> so, yeah. No, no drought this year. Man, somebody need to do a rain dance. <laughs> in reverse. <laughs> yeah. yeah if, they, if nobody knows how to do it, please send me instructions. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll go out there and start doing it. <laughs> Good yeah. job talking to um, the last couple of interviews that you have. Really appreciate those. Got a new friend with uh, Chemo of Moya Tactical. And the next thing we'll be listening to is um, your one you did with the Ladies of the Women's Defense uh, Network. Oh, yeah. Um, Brenda and Maggie. Yeah. yeah. Man, I'll tell you, that was a fun conversation right there <laughs> with those two. Because, um, you know, anytime you get around people that do the same thing you do to have the same interests you have, that conversation can go on for at least Ever. About six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and um, the material that I sent you, I edited it down. Like I said, it was a fun conversation. Yeah, I can tell. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go out here and um, go downstairs and start doing some push-ups so I can get ready for this modeling at um, <laughs> the NRA carry guard in September. <laughs> I hear you, man. I walk across the stage and let my chest muscles flex. <laughs> <laughs> you go right ahead. <laughs> hey, that's it right there. But um, check me out here in a few um, – next few episodes and you know how I do it. Put the information out. If you like it, send me a message, uh, send Ken a message, tell him what you want to hear. Tell him if you don't like it, if you do like it, give us a thumbs up, share on um, podcast with everybody, you know, and let's all have fun together. Keep shooting, keep practicing and have fun. Back to you, Ken. Do you like a good cigar? Check out PiroTrader.com. Ever been looking for that rare or hard-to-find cigar, or even a cigar at a better price? Tired of searching online at local shops or even risking forum pages trying to find your favorite box of cigars? PuroTrader.com is the answer. These guys built the most sophisticated cigar platform in the world just for the cigar community. PuroTrader allows users from all over the world to connect, share, buy, sell, and trade cigars. Connect with thousands of retail shops, cigar collectors, and aficionados from all over the world. This platform is built for the cigar community by the community. So how does it work? It's simple, it's fast, and completely free to sign up. Yes, it's free. They charge a small fee only when a cigar is bought or sold. Join PiroTrader.com now and use the promo code BMWAG for 25% off of the Puro Trader fee. That's P-U-R-O Trader.com and use the promo code BMWAG for 25% off the Puro Trader fee. PuroTrader.com. Thanks for joining us for the Law of Self Defense Case of the Week. I'm attorney Andrew Branca for Law of Self Defense.com. This week's Case of the Week is Jordan v. State out of the Texas Court of Appeals and a decision handed down a couple of weeks ago on May 22, 2018. The issue in this case is whether a defendant is entitled to a self defense jury instruction against a criminal charge of having accidentally shot two people when that defendant discharged his pistol while being attacked by a mob and where the people shot were innocent bystanders rather than mob participants. This case begins, unsurprisingly, with a bunch of people drinking to intoxication in a bar restaurant, the Silver Star Smokehouse and Saloon in Texarkana, Texas. The defendant and a friend walked into the establishment to have dinner and were confronted by several of the drinkers who had a pre-existing grievance with the defendant. The defendant and his friend decided it was more prudent to leave rather than stay for dinner, so they canceled their food order and left. When they exited the restaurant, they had to walk past several of the drinkers who were gathered outside. The drinkers had apparently determined to attack the defendant and his friend, and as the defendant and friend fled to their car, they were indeed attacked. The defendant's friend was punched once, hard enough to immediately knock him unconscious. He would wake up in the ambulance and would be found to have suffered a fractured eye socket and nose from that single punch. The drinkers then rushed the defendant. 
The drinker who had knocked out the defendant's friend with a single punch was over six feet tall and extremely fit, in contrast to the defendant who was five foot five inches in height. So there was a substantial disparity of size and strength between just those two. In addition, however, the defendant was simultaneously being attacked by a second of the drinkers, so there was a disparity of numbers as well. After seeing what happened to his friend and being mobbed by two attackers, at least one of whom was much larger and stronger than he was, the defendant believed he had no alternative but to pull his gun and fire it even though he could not see to aim the weapon. In other words, he was firing blindly. In doing so, he managed to shoot two people uninvolved in the attack on him. Both were seriously injured but survived. And this would be the basis for two charges of discharging a firearm in a manner that constituted deadly conduct that were brought against the defendant. When the defendant fired the gun blindly, it did cause the two men attacking him to stop attacking him and to run away. The defendant fired at the larger attacker as he fled, striking him in the femoral artery. That attacker would survive the wound, however, and this would be the basis for an aggravated assault charge against the defendant. At trial, the defendant requested a self-defense instruction to the jury to all the charges against him, meaning both the aggravated assault charge for shooting the fleeing attacker and the two charges of deadly conduct for the shots fired blindly. The trial judge agreed to the self-defense instruction for the aggravated assault charge, but denied the self-defense instruction for the deadly conduct charges, the two blindly fired shots. The jury ultimately hung on the aggravated assault charge, and the court declared a mistrial on that charge, but the jury did convict the defendant on the deadly conduct charges. Now, these are third-degree felonies, so these are felony convictions. The defendant appealed his conviction on the grounds that it was reversible error for the trial court to refuse his requested self-defense jury instruction with respect to the deadly conduct charges. The defendant's reasoning is that although it's true he fired those two shots blindly and struck two people who were not attacking him, he fired the shots because he reasonably feared an imminent threat of death or grave bodily injury at the hands of the two men who were attacking him, and he fired the blind shots to end that attack. The appellate court, however, declined to accept this argument. It ruled that self-defense allows for the deliberate use of force against an imminent threat, not the mere blind use of force. Note that this is different than the transferred intent doctrine we've discussed previously in other cases of the week. If the defendant had fired lawfully and non-negligently at an attacker, and that round had overpenetrated and hit an innocent bystander, the lawful intent in firing at the attacker would transfer over to justify the incidental injury to the bystander. The facts here are different than that with the Court of Appeals essentially concluding that firing blindly could not be a lawful use of defensive force because it was, by definition, not directed at a specific threat. Because the force itself could not be justified as self-defense as a matter of law, there was no need for the trial court to give a self-defense instruction with respect to the deadly conduct charges that were based on that unlawful blind firing. The defendant's conviction was affirmed. As always, I encourage you to read this case in its full text form. You can do that by pointing your browser to lawofselfdefense.com forward slash Jordan. If you enjoy this content, I invite you to join us for the Law of Self-Defense live show every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern. It's totally free to either participate live or to watch the recording after each show. For more information, point your browser to lawofselfdefense.com forward slash show. Remember, you carry a gun so you're hard to kill. Know the law so you're hard to convict. I'm attorney Andrew Branca for lawofselfdefense.com. Crossbreed holsters are some of the finest holsters in America. They are imitated for a reason. They sell holsters, belts, modular systems. The U.S. company that my friend Mark Craig had started in 2005 has been a supporter for you and I for almost a decade. Crossbreed Holsters has raised the standard for customer service in the holster industry through its two-week tried-free guarantee and a lifetime warranty. You tried the rest, now get the best. Go to CrossbreedHolsters.com and tell them Ken sent you. CrossbreedHolsters.com 
Can I share a little poetry with you? This piece is called I Am Just Fine. You know, you've heard that from people all the time. They tell you, how you doing? How you doing? I'm, I'm fine. I'm just fine. Think about it the next time somebody says that to you in that tone. I'm a person. You know me. I may be hiding my depression. I'm your friend and your brother, and I'm trying to make a good impression. I'm your friend acting like I'm fine. I'm also a person pushing the tears inside. I'm the person sitting next to you. I'm the one asking you to care. I'm your best friend hoping you'll be there. This month, how about we try to call people? Let's connect with people. Let's show that we care. Life is short and folks are leaving out of here on their own volition. And that's a shame. See, everybody's going to die. You don't got to rush it. You don't have to take yourself out. I don't care how bad it is or how bad you think it is. Things can get better for you. They can. Every day you get up, there's another chance to start again to do better. Don't give in and don't give up. If you want to talk to me confidentially, you can call me at 301 845 5570 301-845-5570 If you want to talk I'm here for you Too many people are going too soon that started it all. Black Man with a Gun Reloaded. It's the story of a man who's helped change gun rights in America one heart at a time. 
It's a primer for the firearms enthusiast, and it's a fun read. It's the story of Ken Blanchard. Get yours on Amazon.com. Black man with a gun reloaded. Thank you so much for being a part of the Black Man with a Gun Show podcast. Can't believe it's been 572 episodes. We've covered a lot of gun rights and history and just normal stuff to keep you informed, to keep you thinking, to keep you on top of your game. I'm here to support you, to pick you up and put you back out there in the fight. And please, please, please consider supporting Michael as he reaches back and helping our community and our kids. I gave you a whole bunch of links and calls to action, so forgive me for that. But you can find all that in the show notes for this episode. This is supposed to be a gun podcast, but it's more like a ministry for the cool people in the gun community. I'm your friend and your brother, Ken Blanchard. And just in case nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And it's not a damn thing you can do about it. Until next week. Shalom, baby. To keep in touch with Ken and his cause, head over to blackmanwithagun.com. Hey, thinking about suicide? I'm here to tell you that you're not alone. If you need some help in the U.S., please call 1-800-273-8255. That's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Suicidepreventionlifeline.org 1-800-273-8255 You are not alone.